this video, we're going to continue on with our uh, discussion of the types of testing that you will probably encounter. These are these are kind of just a list of the most common. So uh, the next one we're on is uh, security testing, and security testing is pretty much what it implies. You want to test the system for vulnerabilities. Penetration testing can be in there. Uh, just you know, setting up type of test cases to see if. Uh, if it's easy to get around the login, these type of things, uh, do, do the validators work in the login area? You know, if you uh, if you have something say set up where it's uh, you only get three attempts and then then you're locked out, make sure you know it, your test case dictates that. So if you do the three attempts, you're locked out. You got to check the database and usually there's a flag out there to say hey it's locked or not locked. You know, so it just it's just kind of things. Pretty pretty common sense on the security testing. The next one is usability testing. And usability testing usually encompasses kind of the intuitiveness and the user friendliness of the uh, application or the product. You know, uh, I've used some in the past where unless you really knew the, the system or been in there or, or had some kind of guidance for it. it, it was hard to figure out what you were to do or to respond to. Now, some applications or products that you work on, they may be industry specific. Uh, let's say it's a uh, for a stock market application and uh, it's around the Series 7. That's a uh, compliance uh, regulatory thing with the uh, with within like stock markets and things of that nature. So you may get that application and if you're just a novice or don't know anything about finance, it may not be intuitive to you because the terminology is not uh, is not known to you. Uh, but where your usability and intuitiveness would come in there, even for people that are seasoned that would be testing that industry, is that you may want to click around like there's certain things uh, usually in finance, I think even in medical some. I know in some banking they have the pipelines. And as you move through these sections in the application, you have to complete one before you can move to the next one. Now sometimes all the things will be available to you. So you could jump around, but your software should be smart enough to say, hey, sorry, you can't complete section four until you complete section three or section two or what have you. So that's kind of what usability where you want to, Right, you know, kind of get your test cases in there for usability testing. But just keep in mind, it's mainly about, you know, how user friendly is the app, how intuitive is it. Uh, and that's regardless if it's just out to the general public, whatever your application is, or if it's kind of industry specific, meaning that, you know, stockbrokers would be using it. So they should, you know, they, they don't need to call and say, hey, what's a high yield mutual fund? You know, that type of thing. And the next one is compatibility testing. And that one, uh, you know, that's going to be specific to does your application work across all environments that you have it uh, uh, scheduled to be compatible with? You know, uh, maybe you have Chrome, Firefox, Safari, you know, PC, and, uh, <clears throat> and Mac. So that that's where, you know, you make sure you're compatible with all these environments. Uh I worked on an app one time where we supported on the back end SQL Server, Sybase, Oracle, uh, there were a couple of other MySQL, things of that nature. And there those were all relational databases, but they were all different. Uh, meaning that, you know, to execute this the T SQL commands out of the code wasn't the same uh, for each one, like Oracle, for instance. Oracle doing select statements is just not cut and dry like SQL Server where you pull up query analyzer and you just type in select asterisk from. Oracle, you have to put brackets and wrap it around certain things. And uh, it's a little, uh, it's not so much that it's more difficult, but it's but it's different that you cannot take like, have to have a SQL Server query analyzer open in a, I think it was PL SQL for Oracle open window and cut and paste over from each other. You're going to have to modify and change things up just because of the way they they process those commands. Now, down in the heart of the commands, they're pretty pretty close together. But some of them, they you know want uh, semicolons at the end. Others don't care on it. But that, that's kind of in your compatibility testing that 
your application, if it supports and uses other third party things or uh, different back ends, say, you know, so if you're selling a, uh, a web application and one company goes, oh, well, hey, we use Oracle, and says we use SQL Server, we say, well, we support both of those. Well, of course, you want to have up your tests for all of those uh, different ones. And then there's uh, exploratory testing. Which exploratory testing is kind of a, uh, you don't really have pre-written test cases. And that whenever you do your test, you're going out and it could, it's usually something new that's come in. Uh, maybe you're on a short crunch time or what have you. Or there's really no requirements or any kind of documentation around it. Only a couple of people work for it, uh, work, work with whatever this is. So you do exploratory testing. Or maybe it's something that you want to bring in to the application so you do some exploratory testing and generally when you're doing the exploratory testing you kind of go in and you click around and you you say okay yeah let me see if it does this let me see if it does that and then you come back and you start uh then you start building your test cases there so it's kind of the the reverse you kind of go in and click around and do things and then you kind of record those steps hey yeah it'd be good if we we verify this each time so let me, as I'm using the application, let me go ahead and then and start start my test case creation, as opposed to you've got a test case open, you go, oh, step one, step two, step three, okay. And then uh, here's here's one we'll wrap up on is, uh, and and again, these are just the common, uh, these uh, two videos are just 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 the common testing types. There's there's more and things change and quality assurance evolves and stuff of that nature. But one that's uh, good and I think very vital is, and it's kind of when you're getting kind of close to the release cycle, you know, when all the, everything's kind of been put in and stuff, but it's uh, user acceptance testing. And that's where you have, uh, you, hey, we think we've got this pretty polished and uh, uh, we, we, we'd like you to look at it, and meaning the user. So if you're in a company and it's a self-contained application or product, meaning that it's just used in-house well get the people that are using it to go out you know a select subset of them and say hey go out and test this thing use it how you use it and report anything back to us now generally when they do that when they report back to you they're not going to be creating bugs they don't mean bugs they're just going to kind of send emails or they'll create a document and say hey yeah when i did this you know and you'll kind of ask them hey here's a, a form or a template fill this out and always have that steps to reproduce in there so they can fill it out and uh, and then when they submit it uh back to you and qa gets a hold of it we'll usually take it from there and then put it into a bug format uh so that so that dev can get it and go through it and also that can kind of determine uh your priority and severity of the problem they're seeing because some people may be using it and yeah they get an, an issue but they're the, really the only ones that do that and in my opinion yeah that should be resolved and fixed but it's not a high priority to fix okay so i think that kind of wraps us up uh i all these are vital and ones that you should encounter if you're getting into the qa environment uh i hope these over these two videos it kind of helped clear up some things i didn't want to do it like from a technical point of view i did it more of just kind of talking to you about it uh and then there's a little bit of real world wrapped in there uh some of them you know you really want to like functional and regression testing uh security testing you know that you really want to focus in there now some you'll want to focus more than others uh depending on the application of the product you're in but uh i hope you got something from this video and uh look forward to seeing you on the next one i think we're going to have a part three and then we're going to get into more design and you know doing the test plan the test suites and then things of that nature and uh we'll maybe have a little uh, not necessarily hands-on but we'll we'll use the applications with it so anyway thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one